And here is our interview about the break into the Capitol with Gary Jackson. Perhaps a good place to start is a question that a lot of people are asking, which is that it appears that the Capitol Police were caught off guard. Is that your assessment? I think it was a tremendous security failure, to be honest. Uh, they should have been prepared for hundreds of thousands of people marching to the Capitol, and there was little. Uh, you know, you have to take your hat off to the few that were there law enforcement, but there should have been plans for this. Yeah, so I have a lot of questions about these type of demonstrations, and I don't know what your familiarity is with these type of demonstrations, but uh, let, let's kind of take it from the beginning and see what you're able to answer. So it starts with Trump's speech uh, on what's what, the lawn of the White House, essentially? Yeah, on the 6th. I, I, on what, on 6th Street? Yeah, on the 6th, on January the 6th. 6th, yes. Oh, January 6th, yeah. But as far as the location, it was yes. adjacent to the White House. Now, right. would, would those guys have had to go, the people who attended have to gone through a metal detector to attend that? Yeah, you know, it depends on exactly, and I can't find out the exact proximity because the, there were way more people than that. It stretched all the way back to the working monument. So there were, I haven't seen an accurate estimate either, but it was some hundreds of thousands, probably, 200 to 300,000 people, and uh, they were lax everywhere. I, I have to say, they were lax. Uh, and having formerly been in the Secret Service, I'm aware of how prepared they can be. Uh, but I would say they were even less prepared at the Capitol. Mm -hmm. Well, but, but, but again, I want to kind of start with, with, with the first event because that led to the second event. Because one thing I was wondering is, it doesn't appear that any of these people had guns, thank God. Right. So going back to my original question, do you believe that at some point they did have to cross through a metal detector to, to attend Trump's speech? Apparently not. And, that you know, there's no information on that. I have looked. There's there's no information about the security. Well, the what, what about, like, you know, the inauguration that's coming up? Do, right. If you want to attend that inauguration, are you going through a metal detector? Absolutely. Okay. That seems like a no-brainer to me. I, I would think that any event where you're attending where Absolutely. the president is going to be speaking requires Absolutely. a metal detector. Absolutely. Uh, it, even more than that, IDs, you have to check IDs. So there's a lot of, you, how do you check IDs on 300,000 people? I don't know, but um, they should have been prepared for such a large, wherever it was located. Well, and uh, it wasn't it wasn't at the portico. of the so I'm not sure how far out it was. Who would have done the security planning for the Trump speech? Would that have been Secret Service? Primarily Secret Service, but they always work with uh, D.C. police and other authorities, FBI, if necessary. So it's it's usually a gang of cops, you know, from different organizations. Um, and they work together very well. Mm -hmm. We're used to doing this. <clears throat> So um, the one question I can't answer is the exact location because I can't find it. The most I've seen is near the White House. So mm -hmm. it could have been outside the fence where you don't need ID, you don't need metal uh, detectors. So my guess it's back in the area, not up against the portico of the back white. Or they would have had to gone through all of that. It almost seems as if they were prepared from a security perspective for the Trump speech, but not for the march on the Capitol. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. I think, you know, you can guarantee that President Trump himself was protected, okay? That's, that's the purpose of the Secret Service, is to protect the protectees of the Secret Service. So when it comes to crowds, you're looking at Capitol Police, you're looking at D.C. Police, you're looking at uh, National Guard, perhaps, being on the ready if they needed to be called out. And I'm a little surprised they weren't. Um, and it was to be a peaceful march, uh, according to what President Trump said. He said, let's peacefully and patriotically walk to the Capitol. And... Of course, when you have a group like that, 
some of that group becomes a mob. And a mob isn't a group, but a mob has intent to cause harm. So there was a fraction that basically breached the capital that weren't there for a peaceful march. No. Hey, Gary, oh, may, may, uh, is the microphone on your headphones? Uh, yes. Could you just, maybe just hold out the microphone just a little bit. Okay. Was, sometimes you're, it's, not, it's missing you. I have another set I can try. That, 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 that's better. That's better. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So it, it seems that there, there, there was some things on social media about going to the Capitol afterwards. So, but, but, you know, I, and I don't know, is, is there, there's probably uh, an application that you file to do a demonstration at the Capitol. They're supposed to be. And that probably was not, filled out in this circumstance i don't know uh if it was weren't prepared by reading it uh i would have expected with three hundred thousand people i keep saying three hundred thousand but let's say two to three hundred thousand uh marching toward the capitol uh there had to be some observation of some people in that group that were getting pretty rowdy it wasn't just everybody 100 percent marching people yeah Oh, you know, when you start seeing those kinds of observations, you start preparing a little differently. And it takes a little while to walk up there. You know, it's not five minutes. So um, there should have been people on the ready, including National Guard that D.C. could have called out. Um, so there just wasn't much visible security. And, and Trump supporters in the past have been peaceful. They, they don't have a... Yes. history a history of violence like some other groups have so that's one reason why the guard could have been down a bit yeah that's correct i think based on history uh but it, you know it, it, me this did not start on the six it started a long time ago and you know i kind of have some analysis of that but uh, this was this was a process that started with his followers that have they have become increasingly Angered uh, over this whole election process. There's also virus. There's past uh, damage and violence in the streets, and you know. Um, so there's a lot leading up to this that went beyond the speech. I think the speech, in a sense, uh, was the trigger. But the gun was already loaded, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, I mean, I actually happened to watch the speech. I wasn't feeling good at the time. In fact, this uh, may be one of the few podcasts conducted by someone positive for COVID. I'm pretty sure I have COVID right now. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm close, but I'm not there. I'm I, got, to... I, I got back from Park City with a big group on a ski trip and about nine out of 10 got it. It's basically just been like a common cold for me. I, I, I even skied with it, but I, I, I well, have you look healthy and younger. So. <laughs> Thanks. And I, I, I've jumped ahead of the line for the vaccine is the way I like to think about it. So yes. it's really has not been a, a, a big deal for me. Um, but anyway, so I, I, I was watching it. And so I saw the Trump speech and, you know, I was zoning out during the speech. Yeah. It was kind of a typical Trump speech that kind of goes on and on and on. And he yes. goes state by state with the numbers of this many right. people under 21 who voted, et cetera. In fact, uh, I was watching on Fox Business and they had a split screen, one showing the crowd, one showing Trump. And, and people were filing out during the yeah. speech. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't a rousing no. speech by any stretch. No. Now, now, maybe Giuliani got people worked up by saying, trial by combat right. whatever the hell he meant by that yeah um or, or don jr don jr but um but yeah i think it's hard to say that the trump speech itself got around but to your point there's all kinds of things leading up to that moment yes and this is the ultimate moment because congress is about to vote to certify so it's yeah. all coming to a head uh i don't think trump did a great job of rallying the troops per se but they were already rallied right and to that point we now know that many came apparently with some pipe bombs yeah. and certainly came with military gear and helmets and the padding and so on. So this was pre-planned by probably, you know, the ones who really carried it out, I think. Yeah. And we don't know for sure who they all were. Um, you know, many are opportunists. If, if you are Antifa or uh, um, 
other groups, and you hear that 300,000 people are going to march to the Capitol, that's a perfect time to jump in, blend in, and get closer than you would have gotten otherwise, and be prepared for backlash and riots in the street with pipe bombs, whatever. That's, that's a typical MO we've seen all, since summer. Uh, when there's actually starts out as peaceful protest, that's being objective. Then suddenly it turns south. There's a group that breaks away, breaks into stores, steals stuff. It, it's an opportunistic dance to do what otherwise you'd be caught for. So this is not unusual that you would have a fraction kind of break away and do their thing while you have probably 90 some odd percent just standing there. Yeah. So what's interesting is it looked like the perimeter of the Capitol was closed. I, and I don't know what, what is typical. I, I've been, a, usually the Capitol is open, I thought, to visitors, at least to a, a certain number of visitors. Yeah, but it's hard to get in. You get up to that door, and if you don't have the right ID or a tag, you're not getting in. Um, so and, for instance, a tour, if a tourist wanted to go into the Capitol, what's the process? Yeah. You'd have to go through a process yourself. You'd have to have an ID. You don't just walk in. You'd have to call ahead, make arrangements, um, and be accepted. Uh, so they would ask you, what's your ID? You know, um, let's check. And so... Um, and would you been, say the perimeter being um, cordoned off, you know, I mean, as much as at least 100 yards away from the building itself is pretty common? Yeah, but it's nothing. I mean, it's nothing. It's just, some people call it a snow fence. I mean, you can pick it up and move it. So it's not really for riots uh, or protesters. It's just some frontline perimeter uh, obstacle. Uh -huh. uh, but it's not designed for this. In fact, they've been putting up a much larger fence, 10 foot around it now. Um, it's very common, correct me if I'm wrong, you, you know, the million man march and martin luther king's famous march and so forth i mean all of that happens on what they call the mall mm -hmm. right which leads directly to the capitol right and, and that's where the inauguration will be yes and so for instance when we all envision the martin luther king speech is that essentially the same location as where biden's going to be speaking from it sounds like it it sounds like you know they usually have it in the back of the capitol they're already putting up you know, the benches and all of that. And so they're already there. And, yeah. and that's why they're putting up the extra fencing. And I guarantee that there'll be National Guard on standby. There'll be, you know, a lot more security this time. So you I, can have an event there, but it's probably got to be reserved months in advance and oh, all yeah. kinds of scrutiny. And there's going to be um, metal detectors and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah you don't just walk in. Uh, so that's really the, the, the difference here. As far as people saying, oh, Capitol Police, you, you know, uh, had their guard down or whatever. I mean, yeah, they had their guard down, but, you know, part of the reason was there was not an event planned <laughs> for that location. Yeah, I, I, uh, one thing I can't find is how much was announced about walking to the Capitol. Uh, obviously, it was in the speech, and we came here to march, but um, there's not much about this. So well, and, and, but, and that's something this hasn't come up before, but maybe that's another way in which Trump actually should be faulted is that he should know better than to tell people to go march to the Capitol when you don't have a permit to be hanging out 250,000 yeah. people at the Capitol. I mean, his intent, the way he spoke was good, but it was missing logic, to be honest. I, I'm just, again, being objective. Um, you don't tell a group that size that go to the Capitol, walk to the Capitol. In fact, he said, I'll walk with you, which obviously you do, um, and voice your concern, support some senators who are trying to, um, I won't say overturn, but trying to object the Electoral College's votes around those five states, show them your support, uh, but we're not going to support some of the senators that were weak. Yeah. And so there was a message there. And, you know, 
people went to show their support, but some did a lot more than that. Yeah. I mean, it's arguably, I don't know the rules of DC, but it, it could even be an unlawful gathering. It could you know, be. Right? To have hundreds of thousands of people go to the Capitol when they have not made any application for any demonstration at the Capitol. If they didn't, I don't know that for sure. Yeah. Uh, there could have been a permit. There could have been. So there, there's still a lot of questions about this since it's so new. Um, but the one thing I will say is nothing has been solved. It's unfortunate there was loss of life. Very unfortunate. Should have been avoided. Um, but the vitriol and everything. And um, all the way through, you know, trying to uh, impeach Trump, uh, even after uh, he leaves office, and they can, so he won't run again. So there's a there's a lot going on. Um, nothing's really been settled, and uh, unless this stops, we're going to see continued protests and violence. Yeah, yeah. The, the the response to it has arguably been as bad as the event itself. Yes. Uh, media, of course, anything that Trump does, yeah. they overreact to it and uh, right. try to take advantage of it in every way that they can. But uh, yeah, the fact that this being an impeachable offense seems uh, absurd to me. And then, of course, taking him off yeah. Twitter is absurd. You know, it's just suppressing speech and uh, 75 million people, dismissing 75 million people who voted for him. That's not going to end well if, no. if that's the idea. No, it's not. It's just anti-American, uh, the, the whole response to this. And like I said, like I said, whether you're left or right, you know that. But one side's just been a lot more vocal about it than the other one. And that's not picking sides. It's just saying, you know, one side still wants to correct what they think was wrong. The other side just wants to punish yeah. and move on. That's basically what's driving both sides. Very different. Well, we and we've had extreme now violence on both sides of the political aisle here. It's it's you know we had a summer full of Black Lives Matter and Antifa violence, Absolutely. and now we've had uh, Trump supporter violence. And you know the shoe is on the other foot for both sides. Yes, correct. You know, so for all the correct. people that's that defended Antifa and things, say, oh well, it was just a few bad apples. They were mostly peaceful protests. Right. Well, now Trump supporters are saying the same thing. It was just a few bad apples. It was mostly a peaceful protest. And now all of a sudden the left is on the side of the police and is very upset that what happened to the police. Correct. And they're the ones that wanted to defund the police before. Right. <laughs> and there's no, you know, at this point, honestly, both sides should be talking about unity. It's become almost a joke term. Yeah. There's nothing about, okay, let's have peace. Let's start new. Let's work together. All the things that should be happening to quiet this down, unfortunately, it's just not occurring. And so we're seeing like rabid speech that's going to keep this going in one way or another. Yeah. It's like know when you've won. Yes. You know, if you're the Democrats, yes. you have won. You've got the Senate, that's you've right. got the presidency. Right. Trump is pretty disgraced. Right. And now they want to dance on his grave. And, they want to destroy him. Right. Yeah, and and that's where they're going to just take this too far. You know, they, they they've got a beautiful win right now where Trump is leaving in disgrace, not even in, attending the inauguration, which I think makes him look bad to not yeah. attend the inauguration. So you know, let it be, and be magnanimous and and run with it. But you know, Biden doesn't seem to have the strength to have his own voice because here's an opportunity right. where he could he step could. out in front of all those passionate people and say enough is enough, but he's not doing it. In fact, it, it instead he fanned the flames Yes, That's by correct. saying that, Oh, don't tell me if this had been a black lives matter protest that this wouldn't have right. gone down differently. And, and, the, and the last four years have been hell basically. But yeah. I mean, I mean you're the you're the you're the president elect. Right. You've got all these racial tensions, and you just fan the racial tensions. And by the way, with kind of an absurd argument. I mean, one thing yeah. that I comment on, and I, I want to get your thoughts about the various deaths, but 
I don't know if you've seen the video. It, it's not the networks don't like to show it, but I've seen it on social media of the woman being shot. Have you seen it? Yeah, I saw. Didn't tell she was getting shot, but I saw the shot and could see it going through the glass. If and, yeah. if that was the the Capitol Police shooting a black Black Lives Matter protester, our cities would be burning to the ground right now. Absolutely. And he wants to say that this crowd was treated special because they were white instead of black. Yeah, that just, I mean, there's just a lot of bad statements occurring that are, you know, we've had that all year, honestly. Uh, Even going back to the riots, uh, I remember uh, uh, one of the newscasters standing in front of a burning building saying, this is peaceful. Right. So, you know. There hasn't been real accurate reporting, to say the least. Um, And it's all been looked at as peaceful protests in the past. People know better than that. But when it comes, like you said, okay, the shoe's on the other foot now. And we want those people prosecuted inside that capital. They have to be. There has to be an example made of them, and they deserve to be prosecuted. But you know what? If you're this young lady... 18-year Air Force veteran, why is she in there break, trying to break through a deal to get to the Senate? I mean, that's when you do get shot. They have to protect the Congress. They have to protect them, just like the Secret Service has to protect the president. And if people are coming through that door and those congressmen and women are still in there and the senators, they have no choice. They have to protect them. And so, 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 so do you think, speaking of that particular incident, um, do you think that, I think the police officer has been suspended, but would you right. imagine that he's going to seek uh, or, or uh, receive punishment or, or you think he acted appropriately? I don't think he's going to receive punishment. I think that they were coming through the door. He did what he had to do. It's unfortunate. It's a tragedy, but what else is he going to do? But all of the crowd through to get to the Congress people, he can't do that. I think he could have handled it differently. Even some warning shots, you know, even showing the force. And why weren't they protected? I'm talking about the law enforcement with tear gas, pepper spray. You know, why not spray tear gas and pepper spray through that window? Keep those people away. In fact, I'm surprised we don't have canisters and pepper spray and tear gas around the Capitol, just in case a group gets unruly. Yeah. So I think the security process needs a strong investigation. Um, it's not to put police uh, in jail, but they were overwhelmed, and they should not have been overwhelmed. Sh- that yeah. should have been adequately planned. If you can't call law enforcement together at the last minute, we have a problem. Yeah. Well, my, my attitude is she shouldn't have been killed, but I don't have much sympathy for her because when you do stupid things like that, as a policeman is pointing a gun at you, yes, uh, you take your life in your own hands. And it's the same thing that I've said regarding a lot of the you know, incidents that have been so polarizing over the summer and so on, the George Floyd kind of stuff and so on. It's that, you know, the thing shouldn't have happened to the person, but then again, they put themselves in that situation. You're supposed to do whatever the hell the police tell you to do, period. Right. And, and when you don't, you take your life into your own hands. And that's, that's what she did. And, um, you know, I, she got caught up in what they call the mob mentality, which I think a lot of the people, Yes, I don't know. Tell us, based on all of your studies and so on, about mob mentality and what happens to people when they get caught up in the fervor of something like like what happened. Well, a lot of people don't understand what a mob is, first of all. So it's not a group of people. A mob is when a group, and it can be a small group, it can be two or three people. But when you have a group of people that suddenly have intent, to harm or cause damage. Now you're talking about a mob as opposed to a group. So there's a, there's a switchover with intent. 
if the intent is there. For example, if we had a group of people arming the Capitol, they were planning to cause damage and harm. That's a mob. The 300,000 that were going there to march peacefully and to show concern, that's not a mob. That's, that's a protest group. So when you have a mob, they often get out of control. Um, there's not much restraint to stop them. And you kind of feed off of it one another. You know, you know who each other are. And look at me, I'm going over the fence. Look at me, well, I've got to go over the fence too. I, I've got to break in the door. Well, me too, we, let's keep going, let's keep going. So it kind of has the self-fueling. Um, it just kind of feeds on itself. And there might not be a plan other than I'm going to cause damage or I'm going to cause harm. And that's basically what happened, mob capital which isn't everybody. It was a significant group big enough to overwhelm security and to get into these offices. I mean, the picture of the guy with his foot up on Nancy Pelosi's desk, you know, the guy carrying out the speaker's podium. Uh, those people weren't there by accident. That's, you know, that's a plan to go in and cause havoc. And I don't think that's what Trump was saying. I went over his transcripts three times. Um, there's nothing in there to incite riot. Uh, there's nothing in there that says go up to the Capitol and cause damage. The worst that's in there is make your voices heard. <laughs> that's yeah. It. In fact, I, I I wrote down a quote: "Peacefully make your voices heard." He actually says, "I have I have the same quote, you know, peacefully and patriotically, right? Uh, make your voices heard." And so. It's not an incitement to riot, but I can't call it good judgment at the same time. Yeah, I think we've identified in this discussion, sending people to the Capitol, bad idea, um, especially if there was no permits for that. Right. And then also a quote that I have written down that's not from the speech, but that's from Trump repeatedly saying things like, the only way we lose is if it is rigged. Right. Right. So. If And if you've managed to convince your followers of that, then these followers now are going to feel that, well, this is stolen, and this is the type of thing that our founders told us about. This is the reason why we have a right to bear arms, Right, is if, if, if tyranny takes over our government and brings to power someone who shouldn't be brought to power, right? Correct. That's absolutely correct. And I think that not sure we can say everybody is as knowledgeable as some. You know, uh, if you're a supporter and you're there and your focus is Trump, and you not you might not be aware of all the history and all the vitriol, but you know that you're there to support him. And if he says let's march to the let's march to the Capitol, you almost feel obligated to do that because the man is saying let's march to the Capitol. And so, uh, but that's a that's a long way away from let's break in, cause damage, and steal things and hurt people. So that part's missing from what he said, um, and that's where the mob, as I would call it, kind of took over, and that's what we're seeing on TV is a mob. So as you look closely at some of the video and saw the people who were on the front lines of battling the police and breaking down barriers and so on and saw what they were armed with and saw their tactics, what does it tell you about those people? I think that being on the front line is important <laughs> to them. And I think that um, they were there for a purpose that went beyond peaceful um, and patriotic show of do, do you have any or, doubt that, that those people that I'm talking about woke up that morning knowing that they were going to be attempting to break into the Capitol later? I can't put a number on it, but I would say some. Uh, some, as I said, are opportunists. They probably jumped in. This is a perfect time to do this. I think some got caught up in it. That does happen. Uh, you can be an innocent bystander, and suddenly I'm going to join this crowd, like the unfortunate uh, 
young lady who got killed. I don't think she woke up that morning and said, I'm going to break into the Capitol. But she's a good example, maybe, of one who got caught up uh, in the excitement and wanted to get in and voice her support um, to the Congress. So that happens. Sometimes they go beyond their own self control, they're caught up in the group, and it, it, it mob mentality. So some mobs have follow-on people that might not be part of the actual mob. They just get caught up in it, and they're just as much the same as the mob itself. Um, right, hold, hold, hold up your microphone a little bit more, Gary. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, what about Antifa? Do, do you believe that they were there? Yes. And what, and what do you base that on? I do it based on... Um, them finding pipe bombs, uh, which are characteristic bombs they found in the past. Uh, some of the um, other materials, I think they, I think they found a gun. I was trying to find more information on that. Uh, the information, so it's very strong for the mob itself inside. All kinds of stuff, all kinds of videos, but finding more information about the outside. What was going on? Were there more police? Very difficult to find that. Why do we need a really good investigation of what's happening? Yeah. Well, the video though is so good, um, and we've yes, seen bits and pieces of it. You got to assume. So, yes. time will tell. And and you know, if Antifa was there, we're going to know. It seems we will know. Uh, we have facial recognition. Uh, those cameras are very clear. Anybody's face who popped up on that camera is likely to be identified. You know, they run checks against driver's licenses, photos. You know, there are a lot of ways to identify people. Plus, many have been arrested. Now, you know how that works. You know, look, you know, we'll give you a little bit of a deal if you tell us who these three people are. You know, so it's going to happen where most of the people are going to be identified. I'm sure of that. They're already identifying them. You know, the person with the foot on the desk, the person carrying out the podium, the person wearing the deer horns, they already have them. So um, people tend to talk uh, when they get caught and they have facial recognition. So, yeah, it, 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 all that speaks to how absurdly premature impeachment is when the investigation is still ongoing. We may learn that this was a Antifa plot. Yes. And, and that 90% of the people who were on the front lines were Antifa and, and, and with the whole idea of sabotaging Trump's uh, rally. I'm absolutely. not saying that's going to happen, but it's possible. No, no absolutely. I, I hold that out as a strong possibility. Again, there are opportunists, I would call some of them Antifa, uh, who jump into that situation because it's a ready way to be included in the crowd and a good way to get in. And once in, you're in. Um, and Do you have any information on the um, on the other deaths? It seems like there hasn't been that much disclosed. We know about the woman yeah. who was shot. It's not really clear exactly how the officer died or the other three. What I'm seeing, and I actually look specifically for that, it, the, the officer apparently got hit in the head with a fire extinguisher and squeezed. Um, and he died. Fire from, extinguisher. Yes. Wow. He died. He died from injuries. There were a couple others that died from other injuries that weren't related to the actual attack, if we call it an attack or assault. Uh, I, for, and I can't find, because I expected it to said other causes, maybe heart attack or something like that. But I really can't find. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. You can't find information on things that we should know, but we have a lot of information on the riot itself. Yeah, I mean the, the three. So, so you've said the police officer appears that he was attacked with a with a fire extinguisher. I mean, yes. so that person's could be tried for murder potentially. Yes, absolutely. Uh, um, the other three, I mean, were they hit by police officers? I mean, do, do we all I've know? all I've seen, honestly, is it says um, medical related causes. That could be anything. It could be a heart attack. It could be, you know, uh, anything. So I hate to speculate on something like that, but I will say it's very difficult for them 
find that information right now. Um, I'm sure if I keep looking, I'll find it, but I did go back uh, for this purpose uh, of this radio show to see what I could see on the deaths, and it just not much there, uh -huh. um, except the shooting of the young lady and uh, the officer is starting to come out now a little bit about getting hit in the head, you know, uh, that kind of thing. So that's uh, a bad situation. So a, a, a group like ISIS or Al Qaeda, I'm thinking almost must be kicking themselves watching this as they see how easy it was to break into the Capitol. I mean, that would be a major uh, feather in their cap to break into the Capitol. Well, they tried once before, remember, the Capitol has been a target. That's where the plane that went down in Pennsylvania, more than likely, and most people agree, was headed for the Capitol. Um, so the Capitol has been a prime target of Al-Qaeda. And now, as you say, and I've been very concerned about this, not just Al-Qaeda, ISIS, or any other group says, my God, it's that easy? Uh, let's do some more planning. Yeah, uh, but they they probably do recognize that this will change things from a security standpoint. Um, we can expect tighter security uh, with any kind of event that comes close to the capital. We're probably going to see um, buttressed security guards, police, national guard just on standby, just in case, ready to deploy on a moment. And I think we'll actually see, as I was saying, perhaps canisters of tear gas or, you know, pepper spray or whatever around the capital. We will see some increase in physical. Absolutely. You have to have it. Yeah. I, I'm, which raises a good, perhaps, final question is, you know, how do we defend it going forward without destroying right. the natural beauty, the people's access to it? you know, and look like a third world country where all of our monuments are boarded up. Yeah, I agree. That's a concern. But um, something we have to have, I remember the White House, they put up barriers and, you know, they had to. They started with dump trucks and went to walls. And, you know, it's just part of where we are now. Uh, and we can expect more of it. So we have to have increases in physical security. We have to anticipate better. We have to be more proactive, uh, not just reactive. We're being reactive right now, and we'll put up security barriers, and we'll put up uh, increased security. But we need to start thinking, not just about the Capitol. Do we need to take another look at the White House? Do we need to take a look at some of the government buildings? How about the FBI building? How secure is it? So I think we need to take another closer look because I hate to say it, we're in that time where we're seeing a lot of violence, whether people want to acknowledge it or not. These cities have been burning down. This is, you know, we've been seeing violence now many months and not much is being done. So I, I think hopefully people wake up uh, after this and say this was the U.S. Capitol. If it's the U.S. Capitol, it can be anything. And so we better start taking another look. Yeah, it almost served as a fire drill in some respects and hopefully will be responded to as such because it certainly could have been a lot worse for all the critique that this has received rightly so um still bottom line when they got in there they didn't do anything terribly egregious for instance they didn't uh, kill anyone um but you know imagine if, if that's what had happened well you know we can look at past examples congress people i mean you remember the baseball game well where steve scalia almost got killed from a gunman outside the fence and others and you know, law enforcement stopped it. They got injured too. I mean, Congress, men and women, um, have been targets. Presidents are targets. These are a target. We can't forget that. And they can't go lax on us. Um, and when there's a crowd, I think what we'll see is 
immediate increased security, and hopefully there will be improvements in physical security uh, and in anticipation. We should have we should have anticipated. Yeah. Um, someone should have. You know, I don't want to put the blame on anyone. You can't just have the capital guarded by some people and, you know, you get overrun. We can't do that. It might look bad to have increased security, but it's better than someone getting in there and killing 10 Congress people. Right. Yeah, and it was all done apparently without guns. That's the astounding yeah. part. I, you know, I don't think we've seen a single gun, thank God, but they, they broke in mostly through pe- flagpoles, it looks like. Absolutely. I saw one report that said a person had a gun, and that's all it said. And um, so I'm even having a hard time finding out where they found the pipe bombs. Did they find guns in the trunk? Did they no. So there's some sketchy information. I don't know why it's not being reported better. But the focus seems to be not on that. The focus seems on, uh, honestly, how can we go after Trump? and his supporters. That seems to be the focus, Uh, whether we like it or not. And it's continuing today. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I thought that he was done, but I think he's going to stay in the news for quite some time. Uh, Some of those networks, they make too much money off of Trump and they don't want to let it go. Well, we were talking recently, some colleagues, and I would be very surprised. And this is not easy to do, but I would be very surprised not to see the Trump network form of Twitter. And when you think about it, you got 75 million immediate people that's going to go to it. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised. We haven't heard the end of Donald Trump yet. <laughs> no, Twitter seems to be laying the bed for their own demise. I mean, it doesn't make a lot of business sense to me. You know, and to block out parlor, I mean, it's just you're starting to verge on antitrust and all kinds of laws here where the big guys have become a group monopoly now. We used to call them a monopoly. They're a group monopoly now. They get on the phone. Hey, how do you, that's, that's all. Let's all block Trump forever. I mean, that's what's happening. So, uh, and you know, we haven't even talked about the media. You know, my analogy is a fireplace. I, I build my fireplace every day. You got to put sticks in it. You get kindling and some logs. Here in the political situation, sticks and kindling have been going in for a long time. The speech might have been the match that started it. But we're still putting logs on that fire now today. Uh, we're still doing it. The fire is going large. Now, if we left it alone, it would go out. But, you know, if we moved on to the Biden presidency, whether we want to or not, and just moved on with policies and that type of thing, let the thing die down. But we're stoking it, we're stoking that fire daily. And so that's not going to go away. Um, and it puts President Trump in even a more defensive mode because he feels that he was treated unjustly. He, he feels like he's a victim of a coup. Um, and I don't see him going away into the quiet of the night. Yeah, you're, you're giving his supporters more things to get worked up about, for yeah. sure, and rightly so. Like I said, yeah. they could have exited with the high ground, look at Trump, yep. look how silly he was and the way he went out, but now they have to out-silly him by saying that he shouldn't be even allowed to say what he wants to say on Twitter when, you know, they already censor him as they do. They put all kinds of warning labels on his thing. That's not enough. He needs to have a permanent life ban. I mean, it's yeah. just. I can't, I can't believe the logic of it. There's no logic. Um, you know, you have to know that you're stoking the fire when you do these things. And you're not talking about a couple of supporters. You're talking about half the country. Well, and he's just so good for business. I mean, people were probably yeah. talking about Twitter before Trump became president. It would be like CNN deciding we're not going to mention Trump's name anymore. Yes, and say, Well, gee, CNN, you guys are doing great covering yeah. Trump all the time. Why would you stop covering him? Why are they going to cover now? Right. right. You know, so there has to be, there's going to be a loss there for them. 
uh, unless he continues you know, with something. But uh, I think that I just wouldn't be surprised to see him start up his own form of Twitter and uh, you know, social networking if he can. Um, I mean, there's a lot going against that because everybody's saying no networks. You know, uh, how, how do you form a network these days when everybody's saying no? So even more people are jumping on the bandwagon with Twitter. You know, Google's jumping in, and Amazon. Wow. Oh, yeah. I mean, they are exerting their monopoly powers, that's for sure. I mean, imagine if he did try to start something. We already know that Amazon's not going to host him on his servers. We know right. that Apple's not going to carry his app. You got to figure Spectrum Cable probably won't carry his cable a channel. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the private, really... yeah, everybody was concerned about the government suppressing speech, but it turns out private industry is the best at it. Absolutely. And I hate to say it because I hate to go left or right here, but there's totally supported by the left. So they continue to stoke the fire. And um, I think this impeachment attempt with what, nine days left is probably one of the most absurd things I've ever seen. Uh, we, sh we should be passing COVID relief. You know, why are we distracted with uh, the man is, is going to be gone in nine days why aren't we like we say doing the country's business um, and, and, and why you know it, it, it's trump derangement syndrome yes which, which is rampant and and you've got the incoming president who doesn't have the guts to stand up to right. other people in the party and say guys enough is enough let's move forward you know as That's someone true. said all it would take is for uh biden Joe Biden to pick up the phone, call Nancy Pelosi, and say, stop. Stop with the impeachment. This isn't doing any good. And it would stop. And then, you know, we could start moving on. But, you know. Well, he, he would run the risk of uh, upsetting 25% of his base. Absolutely. But he would have the benefit of 75% of his opponents warming to him a little bit. And Absolutely. that's what you're supposed to be, Mr. I'm going to be president to all of the yes. people, as he continues to say. Mr. Unity, right. Mr. Unity, prove it. You know, somebody somebody needs it. to have the guts to prove it. Yeah, we haven't seen it yet. And I don't think he can. Much pressure. No, and, he, he's too insecure in his power yeah. you know, and in, in, in feeling like he just cannot upset anyone in his base. Right. And we don't know who's controlling all of that anyway yet. <laughs> Thank you again to our guest, Gary Jackson. You can check out his book on Amazon, Surviving Mass Victim Attacks. Also, if you missed it, you should check out the episode we did with him about the Las Vegas shooting. Thank you to our producer, Michael Parker. We'll be back soon with another episode of The Hidden Truth Show. Thank you for listening to The Hidden Truth Show with Jim Breslow. You can find us at hiddentruthshow.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Hidden Truth Show. Join us again next week for another episode of Hidden Truth Show with Jim Breslow.